I'm, uh, I did a tutorial earlier on uh, AVI UTL, and it, it was basically just the uh, introductory to the program, basic video editing and uh, exporting. Uh, this time I'm going to get a little bit more advanced. This is the program right here. It's a free program. It's pretty good. It's a pretty good uh, video editor slash compositor, and uh, the best part is it's free. It's available to anybody. Just uh, you know, download it. You don't even have to install it. It comes in the uh, in the uh, seven zip file. You can use uh, seven zip to unzip it, and then just create a shortcut to the exe on your desktop or whatever, and then run it. I already created a, uh, a project, so I'm just going to show you how, what it looks like. Let's just drag my project in here. Now, what I did is uh, I created a uh, type of a uh, motion menu for for Blu-ray and whatnot. And uh, what I did is I just took a picture of a, a baseball home plate and uh, just used a typical uh, digital digital camera and stuff uh, to take the picture. And then I, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have video playing inside the plate. And uh, in order to do that, I had to create a mask to overlay over the plate so that I can see the video behind it. And uh, over here is just the uh, is is the buttons I created for the uh, Blu-ray menu. I just took a picture of the uh, lineup card and and I edited it in Photoshop, or actually I edited it in uh, PaintShop Pro. I also created a mask in PaintShop Pro. And uh, I'm going to show you how to do a few of these things. So right here is where you put all your video tracks and images. This is uh, these are each uh, video layers or tracks, as you will, as it will. And this works in reverse order from probably what you're used to with uh, with Premiere or typical uh, photo editor and stuff. The uh, top layer is actually on the bottom, and the bottom layer is on the top. So you have to understand that. So, uh, anyways, basically it's. What it'll end up doing is it'll start, as you see it right there, and then as it as it progresses along, it will be showing the, the uh, video, and uh, and then uh, when it gets to the end, it'll fade back into the plate, so that if you watch this on the Blu-ray player, and it loops, it'll just be going back and forth, back and forth. And then you'll be able to select individual games that you want to watch or whatever you, whatever you want to do. Okay, so here you want to, I'm going to show you how to, if you want to delete a track, you just select it, hit the delete key, or you can control select a bunch of them, hit the delete key, or you can uh, control and then just drag mouse and select them all but while still holding the control key just delete and it deletes them all okay so I'm going to close this out and start fresh so in order to start we're going to start with the first layer and we'll take this base the JPEG and I'll bring it in here and, and this pop-up will come up and, it'll, and uh, once you know what size project you're going to create you can do match file import if you want and this is already set up the way I want so I'm just going to hit OK. So right here's your picture. You can drag it to expand it. Why not? And uh, if you want to mute it, just click on it and mutes. This is how you mute individual tracks. So that's a picture. Now uh, what I'm going to do above this, I'm going to put my video track in there. So I'll just drag this down below it. This particular video track doesn't have any uh, audio, and that's fine because I can add the audio later. And now I'm going to put uh, another, another copy of the uh, the base uh, picture above that, and then I'll, you know, put it pretty much about the same size. And now on top of this, I'm going to end up overlaying a mask. 
let me show you what a mask looks like. A mask has to be uh, has to be pure white. Basically, what I did is I took a I took this background picture and I and I brought it into uh, Paintshot Paint.net rather, and then uh, I created a blank layer on top of that, and then I painted pure white with a brush within uh, within the confines of this space. And it has to be pure white. That means 255 by 255 by 255. And then I just saved just that layer as a PNG file. It has to be a 32-bit PNG file. This thing will not accept the PSD file, but it will accept PNG 32-bit. And this is what it looks like. So it's just the white, and then the rest is transparent. All right, I'm going to delete the mask right now. Okay, so basically what it, we need to do is the video is behind us and you cannot see the video because the uh, base is, this this picture is above it so now you have to associate a mask with this thing so you uh, double click on this and this will bring up the properties thing I have to drag it in here because you can't see it all right now you can either uh, click on this plus key or uh, right click anywhere on this empty thing and add effect. Either one will get you to the same thing. And you're going to look for a uh, mask. Here it is, the mask. Okay, now, by default, it's just going to give you this little square, which you don't want. So you want it where it says type of mask. You're going to click and you're going to scroll down to where it says select from file. You click that. And then you're going to search for it right here I have it I double click on that and, then, and right now it's, it's really small you don't want that so you're gonna you're gonna over here it says match original size you click that but now you want to invert it because I right now it's just showing the outside and not the inside so it all depends on what you have what, what's painted black and what's painted white so I'm just gonna click on invert and now you'll see it's with inside the, uh, pl the home plate like I want it to be all right that's cool that's pretty easy to do so that's done and uh, the advantage of using a mask like that is you can animate it also if you want to follow a, an object or whatever okay so that's done so now we're gonna also um, we're also gonna add the, uh, the title uh, I mean the yeah the titles over here for the uh, for the menu uh, that's this thing right here this lineup PNG I'll drag that down here now you can see it right there so put it here and expand it so it's the same size as all the other stuff now as long as you got this thing highlighted you can just take it and drag it where you want I'm gonna put it right there now we're gonna add a little bit of effect to this put the plus drop down and then uh, you want to look for shadow how about a shadow okay because everything else has, has a shadow so then you're gonna mess around with these settings over here uh, move it shadow the way you want it and maybe make it a little darker like that so it actually looks like it belongs there instead of me putting it there so that's how you work with that so that's done now, this video is a little bit too big, but we've got to shrink it down. So, we're going to click on the, on the video track. And then uh, over here, where it says zoom, you want to uh, you want to manipulate that a little bit. Like this. And I don't want to make it too, too small because it'll be too, you know, it won't fit in that thing. So, while that's highlighted, you can just drag this and center up the way you want. Maybe make it a little bit smaller. when I when I uh, 
when I move the put the cursor here, I can I can scrub it with the the arrow keys, and you can see it moves right along. But I'm gonna do a little bit of something else too. What I'm gonna do is uh, right before, right when he's making his swing, I'm gonna I'm gonna slow it down and do sort of a uh, speed ramp effect. I'll wait till it drops his foot and then right there. Now what I'm going to do right here where the cursor is, you right click on it and you add a midpoint. Okay, so there's a midpoint right there. And then over here for B play, this controls the uh, video speed and whatnot. Click on this and I'm going to sec select the uh, acceleration movement basically. And then uh, from here I'm going to slow it down. I'm going to slow it down and you, you can see it, it expands the uh, track when I do that. So I'm going to slow it down, uh, I don't know, let's, let's say about, yeah, about 23 is fine. Okay, so now when I scrub this, the regular speed until it hits that point. And now it's going to slow way down. You can see it's going very slow. Now right after he makes the point contact, I'm going to create another point. Midpoint. So select it, right click, add midpoint. And now I'm going to bring it back up to normal speed. Just type in 100. And that's it. So now he's going to swing through it slow and then start picking up the speed. So it's back to normal again. So that's basically how you, how you create a uh, speed ramp using midpoints and uh, acceleration and stuff with this beat play. Okay, so that's all cool. So that's good. And then uh, one more thing I want to add to this to this video is I want to do a uh, fade in and fade out. And so you're going to click on uh, either this plus or right click over here, add effect, and then click fade. By default, it's going to give you half a second fade in, half a second fade out. So, accept. That's good. Now, uh, another thing I want to show you. Not that uh, I'm probably not going to use it in here, but just so you so you can learn how to import an image sequence in case you created an image sequence. If you don't know how to do it, I'm going to show you right here. Take the empty uh, video below it. Right click on it right click and then go up and uh, where it says new media object move over and go to video file and uh, over here where it says reference file click on that and you want to click the first object and this is happens to be a 30-bit uh, 32-bit 32 uh, PNG image sequence with transparency so you click on the first one they all have to be numbered sequentially for this to work properly. So you click on the first one, you click open. Okay, so there it is. Only problem is it didn't show the uh, transparency. So over here where it says import alpha channel, click on that. Now you got the alpha channel. So now when you scroll through that, you'll see it moves the way it's supposed to. And everything's cool. So you could take it and drag it down here, whatever, you, wherever you want it, and then maybe. Uh, zoom out, make it smaller, like that. and then uh, you'll see it's as you scroll, it'll turn and everything the way it's supposed to do, and blah blah blah. So it looks pretty cool, but I'm not going to use it because it's a little bit over the top for what I need. So I'll select it, delete, and that's the end of that. In case you want to put an audio file in here, I'm not going to, but it's want to you can just drag it below it and here is your audio file you can shrink it down to the size you want and of course you can add it fade in fade out on this also it's the same thing you just uh, once you double click on this it brings up the audio properties thing and you can click on this Add volume fade, fade. It'll automatically do it for you, half inch, or you can adjust it, you know, whatever size you want. By dragging this, whatever, or the uh, sliders here. 
But anyways, I'm not going to use an audio file right here, so I'm going to delete that. Now, move this back out of the way. So over here, so well, before you do anything, you you want to set the in and out points. So take your uh, cursor, move it right to the end where you want it to end, and then follow all the way over here. You'll see this this right bracket. That's the out. This one's the in. That's the out. Or you could use your keyboard, left and right bracket. Either one will work. When I, now watch over here when I click it. I'll click the bracket, and now you see how it's all blue over here. That'll that'll tell you what's going to be exported. If you don't do that, you may end up exporting a lot of black screen. Then you click over here on File, and you scroll down to Export with Plugins. And I'm going to use X24 Export GUI. Now right here it's no sound enabled so if you don't have any sound this is fine if you do have sound make sure you disconnect that because otherwise you won't get no sound transferred over and you can't encode it and then you click on uh, video compression and then the GUI will open up and if you're familiar with uh, X264 interface then you'll feel right at home if you're not familiar with it, there's, there's some options you can do. You can adjust the quality slider here. Or you can go into this profile thing, which I didn't know about before, but I do now. Drop that down and can select, you can select the Blu-ray format. iPhone, iPod, some of this other stuff which I don't know. Uh, YouTube format. If you're going to upload this to YouTube. Various options like that. And uh, for the AAC encoder, you can set the bit rate over here or whatnot. And then uh, you could this will export either to an MP4, MKB, or a raw dot uh, two six four file. And I'll be MP4 and I'll name it as a test dot MP4. And I'm gonna click it and then you're gonna see that it starts to render. Uh, you can't see this. There's a semi-transparent thing, uh, command line, over this, but you can't really see it because it doesn't pick it up. But right over here, you can see how it, uh, how it's working, and the percentages, and how many frames and whatnot, and uh, how long it's got before it does. So that pretty much explains all that. And you stopped it by hitting exp uh, escape. So, anyways, that's how it's done. Now, if you want to see what it looks like, I already created it. <coughs> I just have to show you. But this is this is what it is right here. I got it in Media, Media Player Classic, and I'm going to play it for you so you can see how it goes. As you can see, it fades in correctly. Starts to wind up. It slows down, makes the point of contact, and then it speeds back up. And then the video goes down to the end, fades out inside a plate, and then starts all over again. So basically, that's how it would look on your Blu ray player. And then over here, you would have selectable titles where you could select and whatnot. So that's the end of this tutorial. You see how it works. And, uh, you know, this is a pretty good program. I recommend everybody at least try it and uh, it, it's great for somebody who just wants to upload videos to YouTube or whatnot or create special effects like this it's, it works out well so that's the end bye